Good morning, Priory family. It's Matt Wagner, president of the Fathers Club. Hopefully you enjoyed the live stream mass on this special Palm Sunday. Hey, who says monks can't adapt to modern times? I'm here to share some thoughts with you as we kick off this unique experience with our sons. Long ago, when I was presented with the opportunity to lead the Fathers Club this year, I immediately thought about the inspirational words I would want to say as we get to this, one of our last events. Fortunately for you, I have a limited amount of time, so my thoughts will be brief. This event is about spending time with our boys and each other. I will miss seeing all of you in person, but we can still share this experience in a different way. That's why we are here today. We're not going to let social distancing prevent us from making memories. So for every Priory family, let's make this memorable in a special and unique way. At this time, I want to give a special shout out to one group, the class of 2020 and your dads. In the last couple of weeks, I know you've been bummed about all the events that have been canceled and things you've missed. I'm here to remind you that things can happen, but in a different way. I will always remember you, the class of 2020, as a gentleman you are, and I look forward to welcoming you as alumni in the future. I want to take a moment to thank the Priory team, Mary, Father Cuthbert, Steve-O, for your help in putting this event together. Thanks for your support. I also want to give a shout out to a couple Fathers Club members, Jim Fox and Brady Hare, for helping put this together. On to our speakers. Today, after me, you'll hear from Father Cuthbert. Then, as is tradition, you'll hear from a student in the seventh grade about his view of the future. This year, Thomas Rempe will lead that charge. Next, at the other end of the journey, we'll hear from senior Ian Crossy. Wrapping up our experience will be our own Priory team member, Jake Parent. After viewing this video, we challenge you to make your own brunch and share pictures of this experience on the group me link provided. These photos will be looked at for years to come as we, rem we remember this unusual time in our world. Please stay safe. We will see each other soon. And God bless you and all your families. Hello and welcome to this uh, Fathers Club event. It's my privilege to uh, add my welcome to those of the other presenters this evening. And I just want to say a quick word of thanks to all the fathers who have made the Fathers Club such an outstanding experience for me and I think for all of us this year and especially for those who have worked so hard to make sure that this event happened. I really want to thank Matt Wagner for everything he's done and especially for making sure this brunch didn't pass by uh, without some kind of participation. This is a first in our school's history and I think it's a great idea. So as much as I wish I were with you in person right now to celebrate brunch, uh, I'm delighted that we can at least do this. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I will say just a brief word of prayer uh, and let us get on with our meals. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gifts of fellowship that you have given us, especially for the gift of fatherhood and sonship that we all share. Thank you also for these generous men who have given up much of their lives for their sons and made it possible for their sons to be part of this Priory community. In particular, uh, we remember all of the fathers, living and deceased, who have been part of the Priory family and will always be part of it. Um, look after them and grant them eternal rest and repose if they have gone on. We ask you to strengthen all of us as we prepare for the final months of the school year. And in a particular way, we ask you to give us the grace to persevere through whatever challenges might come our way. And we ask all of this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful brunch and uh, a great day. Thanks for being here with us. Hello, my name is Thomas Rimpey, and I have been asked to say a few words about my experience at Priory. Ever since first grade, I have been coming to Priory with my mother to drop off my older brothers here for school. Over those several years, I have walked the halls of Priory, visited the campus store, attended sporting events, 
and met the teachers. At nights, I would see my older brothers working vigorously on homework and studying late for tests and exams. In fifth grade, I shattered Priory and decided to go there for three reasons, the monks in theology, the academics, and the lunches. One of the big experiences I had at Priory is football. At first, my dad did not want me to play football because he was afraid I would get a concussion or some other head injury. But then we figured out that for the most part, it was going to be flex football, which has soft helmets and soft pads. Instead of tackling, we would pull out the opponent's flag, just like flag football. Since Coach Parent left out the tackling, we could focus more on the fundamentals of football without trying to body slam the opponent to the ground. I was an outside linebacker, so I was learning when to disrupt the wide receiver's route, how to cover the running back, and when to drop back in coverage. Eventually, in October, we started tackling, but I liked the flex football part the best. Another one of my large experiences at Priory would be Sedality. Every Wednesday, I would go to the cafeteria. I would first go and sign myself in, and then I'll get a drink, usually orange juice. Then I'll go to the food. Whoever brings the food in that week will usually bring some donuts, but every once in a while there'll be something different. This one time there were vertically cut Asiago bagels with cream cheese that was very good. But most importantly, in Sodality, there was praying to Mary. We would start off with a decade of Hail Marys, then say a few more prayers. He would then finish with some intentions, read the glories of Mary by St. Alphonsus, and sing a hymn. One of the things that I appreciate best about Sodality is that Father Aiden and the many other Priory moms take time out of their busy morning to set it up for us. One thing that I'm looking forward to at Priory is the theater in high school. I cannot wait to be on stage performing musicals, singing, and dancing. Overall, I have had great experiences at Priory. Thank you. Time is a game played beautifully by children, according to the Greek philosopher Heraclitus. Time, the one thing we always want more of, yet have no trouble wasting. Good morning, fathers and sons. My name is Ian Crossy. Today, I've been asked, under these less than ideal circumstances, to discuss my time at Priory of these past six years. Now, in preparing for this speech, I was not sure of what part of my experience I should focus on but I decided to focus on time because time is so precious and now more than ever, we are seeing how global pandemics affect the time we have together. I remember during my seventh grade year, I never worried about time and that was a good thing. Because of this, I was able to make memories with my classmates like playing ping pong, gaga ball, or fighting in the locker room. I was able to joke about homework or sports and eat snacks in the bookstore without a care in the world. These memories are shared by most students at Prairie, but it is really what makes each of us unique. Unfortunately, as we seniors have progressed through Priory, time became more and more important, and we began to worry about it. This is because we had to focus on why we were here and what would come next. So why are we here? Well, there are many answers to that question. As early as Priory's founding, we always had a reason for being here. In Priory's 1954 Statement of Principles, one answer is we are here to obtain an intellectual discipline that will allow us to gain admission to the colleges of our choice. Another answer for Mr. Fred Switzer, one of Priory's founders, is to become the leaders for the future. But I think there is no correct answer. Personally, I used to believe it was to become a perfect version of myself, and that goal grew to include making Priory the most perfect version of itself. I saw potential in both myself and Priory to do something greater, and I wanted us both to achieve that potential. But after hearing a talk given by Father Augustine at our Wednesday assemblies, I realized I was looking over the metaphorical wall. I was looking too far into the future, and because of it, I was losing track of time. No human or community can be perfect. Perfection is safe for God alone. But the pursuit of a perfection that is realistic is excellence. Though our goals at Priory should be broad and unique, the pursuit of excellence is one that both fathers and sons share. We would not be here if we did not want to improve, if we did not want to become better fathers and sons. At Priory, we have that chance. We have an opportunity to become excellent men. In a perfect world, we would have our fathers, who assist us with late night homework, advise us in our daily lives, and become a guide for our future. And fathers, we would have your sons, who help you become a loving caretaker, a role model, and a better man. But this is no perfect world. We must both strive to achieve this ideal relationship while also remembering that it must be realistic. 
I wanted to give one piece of advice for each grade at Priory, but I remembered a poem I read in the fifth grade and thought it would be much wiser than any advice I could give. If you have time, I encourage you to read If by Rudyard Kipling. He describes in the poem all the steps in the journey of becoming a man. Both fathers and sons would do well in heeding his advice. I want to finish by thanking everyone who helped put this brunch together. To everyone who is leading our school during this difficult time, such as Father Cuthbert, as well as being given the opportunity to speak by Mr. Wagner, the Father's Club President. I also want to thank Mr. Parent and Thomas Trumpy, my fellow speakers. I hope in Thomas' speech today, every Priory student found a reminder of the time they spent with their class in the seventh grade and a call to live in the present. Don't take the time you share with your class and with Priory for granted. It will eventually end, and when it does, you want the good times, not the bad times, to be your lasting memories of the Priory community. So thank you for listening, and next up, we have Mr. Parent with a speech on leading by example. Hello, fathers and sons of Priory. I'm really glad we can connect through this video at this time. I want to thank Matt Wagner for having me speak to you guys at this point. And, and really what I want to do is give you a, a message that I hope resonates with you during this time of difficulty, through this time of difficulty for our country, for our school, for each one of us individually. And that message is hope. And that message is also one where I believe we can all come out as better people and better men at the end of this. My story starts about 20 years ago. As a 26 year old young man, I was doing pretty well. I had a great wife, Carrie. I had a 10 month old named Luke. I had a house. I had a job where I was the head coach at St. Mary's High School. And I also taught there. Well, one night, during the school year I was pretty sick and and so I woke up the next morning and decided that I couldn't get to work. My wife trying to figure out what to do with Luke because he, he normally spent his days at at the St. Mary's daycare. She called her mom. She was unavailable. She called my mom. She was unavailable and so she decided to take Luke to work with her. Well as you can imagine a 10 month old doesn't do very well at a workplace so she brought him home early at, at about lunchtime and found me lying on the floor, barely conscious, blue lips, not breathing very well. And she took me and she got me in the car and we drove directly to Mercy Emergency Room. It took a few minutes and very soon I was in a, in a coma. That lasted about two weeks. And during that time, from my understanding how the body works is the blood stays with your vital organs um and and not necessarily with your extremities so my fingers my ears my nose my feet they were all losing blood supply while keeping my my heart and my lungs and everything else uh intact and and, and working during that time well when i got out of the coma luckily the blood started coming back to to those extremities everywhere except for my feet at that point we had to decide what to do and uh three surgeries later I had uh, my feet removed at, at, at def different levels during that time, each one of those surgeries. And I ended up with just the heel, but everything in front of the heel, it was gone. As you can imagine, that was a very difficult time for me. As a young father who wanted to spend time with his son, play baseball with him, play football with him, run around with him and play with him, I imagined a life without feet and how difficult that would be. You can also imagine that I wanted to stay coaching football and stay teaching uh, all my students and being up in front of class and being out on the field and how difficult that would be without feet. And really, to be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't see a way how this was going to work. And I, I fell into some depression at the time. It was at that time I had my deepest and darkest time of, of the whole process. And that was one of despair because wasn't sure how I was gonna handle this. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with the rest of my life. I wasn't sure how it was all gonna go. And two things really kind of kept me going. And, and, and one of them was realizing that the doctors, the nurses, my family, the, the, the St. Mary's family were all praying for me and all doing the, the things that I needed to help support me to get me through this. And they would always be there. And secondly, a family friend came in and as we were talking, I was expressing my, uh, my despair and, and, and uncertainty of the future. And, and he gave me a quote that, that has stuck with me ever since. He said, the will of God will not take you where the grace of God cannot keep you. And when you think of that quote, as I did, I think about that 
God's not going to put you in a bad spot where you can't handle it. And if you give up to God everything that you need to do, everything, all your desires and everything that you, uh, you think you need in this, in this world, he's going to take you and put you in a place where you're going to be able to succeed. His will is what we need to work toward. His will is what we need to accept. And his grace is going to keep us through all these difficult times. And that's his purpose. I don't get his purpose. I still don't understand what happened to me. I still don't understand why. I still don't understand why we're going through this with our country as we are right now with this COVID-19. I don't get any of it. But that's the point. We're not supposed to get it. We're not supposed to understand. We're supposed to give it up and accept that and accept God's will. And if we do that, then we will be able to accept God's grace. All I can do is pray for you guys. And I want you to know that there are people out there praying for you. I also want you to know there's people out there to support you. Your family, Priory, the Priory community will always be there to support you. And through that, we're all going to become uh, out of this. We're going to become better men. And we're going to be, become a stronger community. And for that, I thank God. And uh, I wish all of you good luck. And I'm going to pray for all of you. Thank you.